Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to create a project, kind of a beachy project. <laughs> we're using some brand new items over at Simon Says Tamp. Um, these items are part of their brand new Let's Chill release. And my project today is part of a blog hop. If you guys want to join in the blog hop, there's lots of inspiration with the brand new Let's Chill release. And then um, I'll leave the link down below in the, in the description area if you want to head on over. So let's jump in. There's some new items um, I'm excited about because they're, they're summery and fun. We're going to create a card with the Beachy Keen stamp set. This is a large 6x8 stamp set. A lot of fun, sunshine, beachy filled um, elements and sentiments in here. And then there is a die that is nice on its own, but it can coordinate with the the sentiment in the stamp set. Um, this is available separately, and it is Life's a Beach. What it does is it cuts out each one of these letters. Um, so if you want to stamp it and cut the letters out, you could do that. So we're going to use this on our project today. Along with the beach theme, there's a new stencil. This is the Surf and Sand stencil. And we're going to use that on our project. Um, I'm also excited to share with you some brand new detail around um, brushes. Simon has, you know, the standard size and then they have a small size, but these are detail. Um, I wanted to share these with you and give them a try. I was excited about this. Um, these have round bristles. Let's open this up here. So they're great for detailed areas. And although we're not um, using some real detail piece, I am gonna, uh, pieces, I am going to be using these for, um, for my project today, just for a little bit of blending. But I thought these were really neat. These brushes are, have a nice handle on them, and the bristles are just a little bit lar larger than the eraser on my um, mechanical pencil. So they're good size and great for detailing, and I thought we would try them out today. So let's jump in and start off by, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and we're going to create, you know what, let's create a background first. We're going to start by doing a little bit of stenciling with the surf and sand stencil. And it is, it does have Simon's name on the front, um, but instead of the sand going this way, I'm going to flip it around and I want to, I want the sand to go this way. So I'm going to actually put pixie spray on the front of my stencil. The water and the, the sky with white cardstock and then I'm going to also stencil the middle area with some blue cardstock. So we're going to place this on our panel and I want enough room so I can stamp or I can die cut out my life is a beach. So I'm going to use that as a guide here. And then we can kind of line up our stencil. Nice and secure. I have the stencil where I want it, but I'm going to flip this behind my cardstock so I can continue ink blending on the top. Now we're going to use a few different colors to do a little bit of shading. Starting off with Squeeze Lemonade. I'm going to bring in my blending brushes here. And we're going to go over the top section. I'm not worried about going over the stenciled area because we're going to change it out. But I'm going to go over the top area lightly with my Squeeze Lemonade. And then we're going to go in with an orange. I'm going to be using ripe persimmon and I'm going to fade in from the bottom. I should be using my blending mat. Let me grab my blending mat. My blending mat is a Ranger silicone mat that I cut into quarters. So you're, if you're going to ask where um, I got my blending mat, it's just a regular Ranger silicone mat that I um, cut into quarters to make them smaller and a little more um, accessible for my videos. 
they're easy to trim. I just used my large paper trim, my guillotine paper trimmer. And I think that's looking good. Now once I'm happy with the orange, um, on the top portion of my sky area, I'm going to go in with a blue ink, and I think Mermaid Lagoon is going to work out perfect for that. So I'm going to bring in my blending brush here. And just add a little blue to the top area. I'm happy with the way this is looking. Now we need to add some sand on the very bottom. So for that, we're going to be using my antique linen. Let's put these back here. And I'm going to lightly go over the bottom. Now after I have my antique linen on the very bottom, I want to kind of emulate sand a little bit. So I'm bringing in my brushed corduroy ink. And then I'm going to use my blending brush. I'm going to tap it a few times. And then I'm just going to tap it on my sand lightly to create a little dots almost. To give it a little sandy look. And then I'm going to carefully put flip back my stencil over the top and then we're going to remove it here. Now again, I'm not worried about this area because we're going to replace it. So I'm going to clean off my mat and we're going to do a little bit more ink blending. Okay, this is just a pale blue piece of cardstock. It's about a three inch, um, four and a quarter by three uh, inches tall. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to take this panel and just using my scissors, I'm going to trim around, leaving a little bit of a white area around the top area that we just stenciled. This way I kind of have an, a guide um, on where I want my water to flow. <laughs> We're going to do a little bit of ink blending with Mermaid Lagoon here. And I'm going to go from the bottom of this panel and I'm going to trail up. Okay, after we have Mermaid Lagoon down, I want to bring in a slightly darker ink and Chip Sapphire is going to work perfectly for that. I don't have a blending brush for my Chip Sapphire, so I am going to use a finger dauber here. And I'm going to go heavy on the bottom and going to kind of trail up. Now once I'm happy with the way this looks, we're going to add a little bit of spray. I'm using my Hero Arts White Iridescent Shimmer Spray. I want the kind of look of bubble, so I need my... Now I'm going to bring in my little spray box, put my panel in here, and I'm using the Hero Arts White Iridescent Shimmer Spray. I want to add a little bit of um, ocean bubbles on here. So we have some ocean bubbles. I think that looks really fun. Now is where we're going to bring in the stencil. Now I trim this out and I want to make sure that I can follow the waves here. So I'm going to place my stencil and I think, well no I want to lower it. I'm going to lower it just a little bit. I want some of that dark blue. So I'm going to place this a little bit lower. Okay, I think that's a good spot. I'm going to secure that stencil down and then we're going to we're going to bring in an acrylic block and then I have some Nouveau Glimmer Paste. This is Moonstone. I'm going to add a little bit of my Moonstone. Uh, Moonstone is like an iridescent glitter, so when it dries it'll dry clear, but you'll have that iridescence to it. Um, 
I want to add, I want this to be white. So what I'm going to do is bring in my Picket Fence Distress Reinker. I'll shake it up real good. And then we're going to add a few drops of white to that um, glimmer paste. This is just going to change it so it's white and glittery. I want to turn this into some frothy waves. And then I'm just going to go over my stencil here. If you wanted to mask off your area, you could. But Okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my close this up so it doesn't dry out. I'll wipe off my block. And then we get to pull this up. And we're going to set this aside to dry and I'm going to wash this with some hot soapy water. So we'll set this aside and to dry, uh, let this dry. And in the meantime, we're going to do a little bit of stamping. We're going to stamp some um, flip-flops here. I'm going to stamp my flip-flops, the base of my flip-flops with Kitsch Flamingo. So we'll ink these up. And then I want to add a little bit of shading with my Festive Berries. And this is where my detail blending brush is coming in, going to come in handy. Don't you love that they have a dark pink color? And I'm going to pick up some of this ink with my blending brush and add some color to the bottom of my sandals. And then we can add a little bit of two-tone. I love the way that looks. And we, go, we get no harsh lines since we use our little detail brush. The second layer, it's very easy to line up. We'll just place that right on top. And then I'm going to go over the second layer with my Versafine Onyx Black ink. And it stamps beautifully. There's our cute little flip flops. <laughs> Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to stamp my sentiment here. So I'm, I'm going to stamp my sentiment that says, hope things are sunnier soon. And I'm going to stamp it on the very bottom. I love that there's little ice creams in here too. I think they're adorable. So for the most part, that's all the stamping we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm not sure, but... It, um, I'm not sure if Simon has a coordinating die set that will cut out the flip-flops, but I'm just going to fussy cut these out and then um, I'll block off my sentiment and turn it into a strip. And I'm going to fussy cut these out individually. Okay, after I have my flip-flops fussy cut out and my sentiment uh, trimmed down into a strip, we're going to put these aside. And then I did die cut out a sun from my Spellbinders Sun and Clouds die set. And then um, this just cuts out the sun like this, but I wanted to add a layer. So using a circle die, I cut this out. I do want to do a little bit of ink blending on here. And this is where my uh, blending brushes will come in handy. My detail, although this is for more for fine detail, I think it works for small, um, for small, images too. I'm going to go around the edges. Okay, and then, and I use squeeze lemonade, and then I'm going to add a little bit of shading with my ripe persimmon. And I'm just going to go around the edge on one side. Okay, and these worked really good actually for, for the small areas.
Now we're going to layer these two together, and I thought for a playful look, we would add some googly eyes to this. I'm going to use a foam square, place it behind my sunshine here, and then we can add this to the top. And whenever I do this, I put the opposite color on the other side. It just adds a little bit more detail to it. Okay. I think my background is just about done. I'm going to take my Life's a Beach die and I'm going to die cut it this out on my top panel. Okay, I ran this through. We'll slightly lightly pick these up. And the letters that have the extra pieces in there, I'm going to keep because we need to put those back. So the A's and the E's, but the rest we can punch out. And I want a little sparkle behind here. I'm going to put this on a white background. So I thought we'd add a little shaker behind our beach. I'm going to put a piece of acetate behind here using my tape runner. I had to trim a little bit of acetate off the back. But now that we have acetate behind here, I can go ahead and adhere my um, leftover pieces. And I'm going to use my tape runner actually because I don't want to fuss with glue on this. So I'll just place this down and tack it down with my craft pick here. I'll flip over my B. I'll adhere that. And same with our E. And if you want to use glue, you could, but sometimes glue can get messy on acetate. And so our, our, we inlaid all the pieces to our letters, and so we're whole again. And then we're going to flip this around, and I'm going to add some thin foam strips behind here. We're just going to seal it in. If you want it to really shake, you could double up on your foam adhesive. But I don't mind. Um, I just wanted basically a little movement and some sparkle. I'm going to use my assorted moonshine sequence. Fill in this back area. I'm going to go ahead and remove the release paper. And then I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and put it right behind the shaker here to seal everything in. I gotta trim it down a little bit over here. Okay, and then we have some sparkle behind that beach. I went ahead and put adhesive behind my panel and I'm gonna tack this shaker part to it so I know my spacing and I'm gonna layer these two together like so and then I want to do the same thing with my sand but I'm gonna pop this up with some foam adhesive okay now I'm gonna flip this over add a little more adhesive to the very top and then we can adhere this directly to our card base I have a little overhanging I'm going to trim off. We'll tack this down. And then we can remove the release paper off of our sandy area. This is going to go on the very bottom. I'm going to remove the release paper off of our flip-flops and then we're going to kind of crisscross them over here on the bottom for a little playful look. I think that looks adorable. Now we're going to add our sentiment. I, put, I already put foam adhesive behind it. And then we're going to tack this along with our sunshine. Let's add our sunshine kind of overlapping our our beach here. I adhered a couple of my little googly eyes to my sunshine and we're going to add some extra sequins, just a few down here to spread out the color and I want to put a smile on my sun. 
So for that, we're going to use a memento marker. I'm going to add a smile to my little sunshine. And then last but not least, we're going to add a few drops of glue where we're going to put some extra sequins down here. Okay. After I had a, a few extra sequins adhered, I think we're going to call this card done. I think it's a nice encouragement card with the little beach theme. I hope you get a chance to check out the Let's Chill release. I think you can have um, get inspired with all the inspiration with it. And I thank you so much for joining me. Again, the link for that's down below. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.